In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create multiple portraits using different colours in the style of Andy Warhol. In an earlier video, I showed you how to respond to the work of Andy Warhol's screen printing style, and we're going to reuse the image produced in that video for this tutorial. So let's find that image. I'm going to go to File, Open, and it should be in my downloads. There it is. You can see there's the image that it came from. And here is the and here's what we converted it to. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to crop that image because Andy Warhol very often used a square format. So I'm going to crop it using the crop tool and I'm going to say that I want it to have a fixed ratio of one to one. So we want this to be a square image. So now if I drag these corners in, it will not allow me to sort of squash it to anything other than a square shape and i'm going to reposition it to where i want her to her face to be she's slightly off center which actually makes it quite interesting so i'm just going to select it like that there we go okay so now we have our base image now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go on to file new and i'm going to select a square format again so I'm going to go over to the 2N section here and I am going to select one with, we'll go for 2048 by 2048 pixels. I'm going to call this Billie Eilish 4 and I'm going to click create. Right, so now I'm going to go back onto the Billie Eilish picture and I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to go to select and I'm going to drag it into this image and it should appear there. And then I'm going to hopefully if you've got your transform controls on here, it will allow you to resize that image while you're resizing it. Make sure that you select the shift key so that it doesn't stretch your image too much. And I'm going to sort of Move it about so I think it's about a quarter of that image. Brilliant. And when you're happy with that, you can click the tick. Now I'm going to duplicate this. So I've right clicked on the layer, duplicate layer, and I'm going to do this three more times so that I have four versions of that layer. OK, so now I can select this layer and move it. Select this layer and move it select this layer and move it. Now, if you wanted to, you could rename these, you could double click on it and you could call them uh, Billy 1, Billy 2 and Billy 3, but I, don't, I never find that that actually helps me to remember. I can just sort of see which ones um, I'm clicking. So, um, you just sort of click around, you'll see where the um, boxes appear around and you know which one you're using. So you could leave your image like that. This could be a really good Andy Warhol response. It's a good start. So you could print that out and that could be one of your versions. Now I'm going to show you how you can make it a little bit more varied. So we're going to go to image adjustments and we're going to go to hue and saturation. So you will see if I use the sliders here, I can change the colors of Billie Eilish here. So I'm going to change that one to that. OK, I'm going to change this one again using the same technique, adjustments, hue, saturation to that. And this one to try and make them all a little bit different. What about if we had a yellow background? OK, that one looks like it could have a yellow background, but I need to change the lightness of it. You can use all of the sliders, really experiment with it and see what effects you can create. OK. So say you liked that. 
but there's one color that you just wish you could tweak a little bit, it is possible. So you need to make sure that you have the correct layer selected. So I just wish that this one here had a slightly more vibrant background and I've done everything I can to the saturation to push that color up, but it was affecting the other colors in a way that I didn't like. So what we can do here is we can use the magic wand tool, make sure that that is the layer that's selected and you can select it like that. Now make sure that contingent is clicked because you want it to select all of that color that's in the image. And I'm going to go to hue and saturation again. And I'm going to push that up a bit. Now, I thought I wanted it to be yellow, but actually when I look at how it affects the other colors around it, I might want to make it turquoise. I think that looks a little bit more aesthetic. And I can click OK when I'm happy with that. If I really like the colour here and I wanted to transfer it to here to make the image more cohesive, I could do that as well. So if I go to the eyedropper tool, I can select this and you can see over here in the bottom that colour has appeared. So I can select any colour from this image using the eyedropper tool. And if I change to this layer, then what I could do is I could use the magic wand tool and I could select that colour. I'm going to change the tolerance because as you can see it's not selecting all of that colour, it's just selecting some of it. So I'm going to um, make the toler tolerance a little bit higher so it's, it's more likely to select more of that image. You can see again it's not selecting all of it so I'll put it up to 40. Tolerance is basically how picky it is with the colour. If the colour is exactly the same, you can see there's some slight differences here. So it doesn't want to pick it because it's not exactly the same as that colour. So if you raise your tolerance, then it, again, it will allow you to sort of select more. And then I'm going to go to the paint bucket tool and I'm just going to drop that colour in. And there you go. So there's two different ways. You can use the hue and saturation or you can use the eyedropper tool and the paint bucket tool to change any of those colours. And it's as easy as that to create an Andy Warhol response. And you can do this with any image that you have. You can do it with a, a photograph of a friend or a family member or someone famous like Billie Eilish. So have fun with that, with your responses, and make sure that you do several versions so you can pick up more marks at GCSE and A-level.